Now this is very much a work in progress, but the general idea is that I'm building a model publishing system that uses a web first system in the workflow. So basically we start off by uh, editing the content, building the content, posting up the content into a web interface. Uh, this is probably likely to be in an intranet. Uh, we're not necessarily making this publicly available. So what we're actually doing then is we're going to uh, put the content in or a number of editors will put the content in. Um, then it will be uh, approved by a, uh, a super editor, if you like. Um, and then once that's been approved, we can then export it as um, XML. The XML can then be imported into a, an InDesign template, which is readily constructed with the correct design and layout. Um, and then, of course, this can be uh, pushed out either as a PDF ready for print or for an EPUB. So I'm going to now go to the editing website. I've already logged in as one of the editors. Um, so what this is going to give me then is the, the recipes that are currently being put in. So this is a cookery book that we're building. And you can see that um, there are a number of recipes um, some recipes, uh, me as a, this particular editor, uh, I can edit. So I, I, I take ownership of Moussaka, if you like. Um, so if I want to edit this, um, I simply click on this little button here. Um, and then this is going to show you the, uh, the interface for inputting the content or editing the content. Now, the important thing here is that for each of the book projects, uh, we need to construct um, a set of fields that limit the author or the editor's um, way that they can put this content in. So in other words, uh, you'll see here that we have to, there's a little red asterisk next to the country of origin uh, and of course the title. Uh, we have to put in a country of origin, in this case uh, Greece. Uh, we then need to put in a, um, a preamble or a um, introduction if you like um, and this is limited in that the, the toolbar here this this uh, style toolbar only allows me to use uh, paragraph I can't use any heading levels I can use bold and I can use italic um, and then if we move down here you'll see that I can put in in this particular case this particular book um, is going to allow me to put in one photograph uh, of the completed meal. So I'm not, you know, obviously, as I say, work in progress. Another another um, version might be that we can put in images uh, along the way in the in the creation of the meal or the, or the recipe. Um, so I have the image uploaded and a caption to go with it. Um, and then the quantities of, uh, of ingredients are, have to be put in here and the description has to be put in here. The reason for this is that we are then potentially able to change the quantities depending on the serving, the number of servings. So uh, this might be for two people, it might be for four people, and we can very easily dynamically change those quantities if we need to later on. We can also style things differently, so as you'll see in a moment. The quantity um, can have a slightly different colour of text or, or it can be italicised or something like that. Uh, the instructions, uh, the method for which we, we construct this uh, recipe, um, is then put into this field. Um, and as you can see in this particular case, we can optionally use a heading level 2 and a heading level 3 as well. Uh, we've still got bold and italic. We can also put in a bulleted list if we want to, um, and we can look at the HTML. Now, it is possible for us to cut and paste uh, or copy and paste from a Word document, and the system is set up so that it will actually remove um, unnecessary or, or, or un, uh, unapproved or dis disapproved, if you like, um, styles in a Word document. So if somebody has come along with a recipe and they've already put in headings and various different styles, different colours of text and so forth, that, that should be stripped out if we paste into this field. Um, you'll see here that we put in a, 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 an area where we can determine a serving. So let's say we'll go for a serving of four people and how long is this going to take to prepare? between five minutes and, and three hours. We can always put that in. Um, as you can see, the author here is me. I've uh, allocated myself as a super chef, um, although we do have other editors set up in here. Um, we, we can change that if we want to, if we want to give authority to somebody else to edit this.
So I'm now going to submit that. Um, you'll also see that I have revisions, so it is possible for me to go back through the different revisions and see who's changed what if I, if I give permission for other, um, <clears throat> other, other editors. Uh, and you'll see that also there are categories. So this is a meat dish, but also a savoury course. So we can have, um, we, we, we can, if you like, possibly pull out, um, you know, just the fish dishes or just the salads and so forth. That's the potential of it. OK, so let's go back now to the recipes and you'll see that at the very bottom of the page. Now, again, this would be set up so that only when the whole thing has been approved by a chief editor, would we then get this box at the bottom, allowing us to download the various components that we need to construct our, uh, our book or our ebook. So first of all, we need to download an XML file of all of the recipes that we've put, put in. And I'm going to do that now, and then I'm going to show you what that looks like. That's actually gone into my downloads folder. And so let's just have a look at that and bring that uh, up onto the screen. Um, so here we have the XML then. So what's happened behind the scenes is that this, this HTML has been converted into this XML. Now, what is this XML? Why do we have these various um, tags? Well, the point is that the tags are built on the basis of the document type definition that is being strictly sort of controlled for this particular book project. So this book project says we're going to have uh, ingredient quantity, we're going to have a creator who's actually built, uh, you know, submitted this recipe, the preamble as you can see here, the main photo, the origin, the type, that is whether it's a meat dish and so on. All of these different things are then put in are taken out of this HTML and converted into this uh, this tag system. So let's just put that to uh, to one side for the moment. Uh, now we need to download the InDesign template. Um, now I'll sp explain a bit more about the template when we actually open up InDesign. But the main thing about this is that this is a ready configured template built by the designer. Uh, who has decided what the different styles are going to look like, um, you know, what font we're using and so forth. Um, but the important thing is that the styles are married or if you like linked or, 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 or uh, combined or in some ways with the actual tags that are, that are coming from the XML. So the way that we do this um, for convenience is that the names of the tags are exactly the same as the names of the styles, be they paragraph styles or character styles. I'll show you this in, in a moment when we get into InDesign. Now, when we make the ebook, we are going to need a, a special CSS file, so I'm going to download that too. Um, and now the important part is the images. So all of these editors um, have put in images to go with each of the recipes. And so on. Uh, we need all of these images in our InDesign work as well. So we're going to download those images. So we've now looked at all of the images uh, that have been downloaded. There they are. Probably more than, than we actually need because some of the uh, recipes are not yet uh, approved. Um, so we're going to now just click that uh, button there. So we, we select all of them and we're going to download those files. So we've now have a, a, a set of things uh, ready for us to use. Um, in a folder or actually within our downloads folder. Um, so what I'm going to do now is just to put that website away to, from what to one side, uh, create a new folder here, um, which I'm going is going to be my folder for my work. Um, and I'm now going to go to my downloads folder. So here's my downloads folder. This is uh, what I need then. So here's the downloaded files. Those are all of the images. Uh, I've got the recipes uh, CSS file. I've got the XML file. And I also have the recipes InDesign template. So all of these uh, components well, let, let, let's put it, let, let me explain this a little bit in more detail. The recipes uh, in design template has been put there on the web in the web space uh, by the um, <clears throat> by the designer who's responsible for the InDesign work. 
Um, the recipes CSS file has already also been put in there. On the other hand, um, the XML has been created dynamically from the edited content uh, in the web space. And similarly, the downloaded files has been created out of all of the images that have been uploaded during the editorial process. So what we actually need now is uh, to load up uh, InDesign. We do this simply by double-clicking Summer Recipes. So the action of opening the template has uh, delivered us a single page InDesign document that is as yet uh, unsaved. So I'm going to do that first, save this uh, document, this InDesign document. I'm saving it in my location with my all my other assets. Um, and I'm going to call it Summer Recipes. So having saved uh, the Summer Recipes InDesign file, um, I just want to point out a few things about the template before I move on and import the XML. Uh, the first thing you'll notice is that um, we have one single page set up. The page sizes are all um, set up as part of the template. We also have uh, a location, a text field ready to, um, to bring in the table of contents. So that's already set up. The table of contents is set up to deliver the recipe title. Um, of, of which there are a number obviously in this particular book. Uh, you'll also see that the paragraph styles are already set up. We have, um, as you can see, preamble, ingredients, serving, preparation time and so on. Uh, and also the tags are there as well. Now the tags are there um, in this uh, box here. You'll see the same names, preamble, preparation time, etc. Same names as the styles. And the, the, the tags are actually mapped to the styles as part of the template. Um, if I show you up in the structure panel uh, over here on the left hand side, you'll see uh, that we also have the, um, the doc type is embedded. Um, and that's uh, not editable here, but it, I'm just showing it to you for reference. Um, the important thing is that the dot DTD is actually referring to the tag names. That's what's actually delivered the tag names over here in the tag panel. Um, and and uh, as I said before, those also equate to the paragraph styles, um, the character styles, and also, amazingly enough, up to the object styles. So, for example, we have a main photo, uh, we have recipes. Recipes in the object styles actually refers to this text field here. So this text field uh, that I've selected is uh, an object style called recipes. That's actually quite important because that will be the parent of all of the recipes. Um, and so what I'm going to do now is to bring in the, in the uh, XML that we've created automatically from the website. And I'm simply going to import this. Um, I don't need to set up any particular uh, configuration. But if we now look at this structure panel, you'll see that it's brought in all of the individual recipes. Let's just expand this window a little bit so you can see that a little bit clearer. So here we have the recipes. Um, if you want to sort of analyze this a little bit, uh, we've got the main photo there with its alt tag and so on. That's all come in through the, um, the setup, uh, the back end of the website, which has converted the HTML. Now, the, the, I will just mention this um, special tag here, um, which is a special InDesign tag, which actually what that actually does is it, it, it actually puts a, um, a paragraph break between each of the, the items that starts on a new line. You have to have that in there. Um, and that's part of the namespace that's coming from a, the Adobe website, which you can see referred to up here. Okay, so we have, the, we have all of the recipes in as XML. Just bring that back down here. Now what we need, to, all we need to do is to pull this full recipes, all of the recipes, pull it across into the object, which is the text field, and then just let go. And you can see now that we automatically have uh, all of the recipes in here. Now, um, there's just one or two things to point out. This has actually worked uh, because a part of the template as well, the configuration of the template, um, is also to say uh, build extra pages as they are needed. So as this is 
flowed in automatically flowed into the content or in, into the pages uh, pages are constructed or added on until we get to the very end which is right here now you'll notice uh, that we have images in here but one of the things that InDesign doesn't do annoyingly um, is it doesn't map the uh, the object styles uh, correctly. So also, although I do actually have an object style uh, called main photo and this image is anchored in the correct place, needless to say because of the structure of the XML, it hasn't delivered this into the um, the style that I, that I want for that object. So what I have to do unfortunately by hand at the moment is to select that image and then select the main photo object style. So I have to do that for each of these images. It may be possible to set up a, a search, a global search and re replace um, to do this, um, but I, I'm, I'm not going to do that at the moment. For this amount of uh, work it's, it's not really worth it, so let's just um, quickly select that. Make sure I did that last one there. Yes, okay. So now this one here is a very large picture, so that's actually going to move once I do it because it's moved back to the to the title of the recipe. Uh, it, there there are ways of um, restricting the image size so that your editors can't um, put in uh, images that are too large, and this is actually what's already happened behind the scenes. Um, so when they uploaded the image um, into the web service, um, what's actually happened is it's reduced it down to a maximum size that is allowed for the, uh, for the, for, for the style that's required in this particular book. Okay, I think I've just got one more to do. You'll notice that this is in alphabetical order, by the way. OK, so um, now the next thing to do is to take the table of contents and uh, refresh it. So I simply select my table of contents uh, placeholder here, go to Layout and go to Update Table of Contents. And you'll see now we have a table of contents. Now, the table of contents is currently off the page, the reason being that I'm uh, actually creating an ebook from this project. If I was creating a print product, then obviously this would be actually on the page and I would configure the style um, more uh, so in a more sophisticated way to deliver the, um, the page numbers you know, in a more uh, compelling uh, view. But at the moment, I just need this on the pasteboard so that it gives me the table of contents in the ebook. Okay, let's just save this again. Okay, so now the final thing to do then is to export this uh, ebook. Now I'm going to go for a reflowable. Um, now, um, the template has all of this configured in here, but there are just one or two things that I might need to check. Um, first of all, I'm going to check that the image for the cover is in the right location. So under downloaded files, I'm going to pick up the cover. Um, I'm also going to add my Java, uh, sorry, my, my CSS file. Uh, actually, it's already in the, um, it's already in there. But I'm, I just want to make sure that the path is correct because it, in a template you can't really set the path correctly because someone is going to somebody is going to save it in a different place. Um, so I'm going to remove that one uh, and I'm going to add uh, the one that is. Uh, in my folder that I've put on the desktop. Um, the metadata is already in there, although I might want to uh, I might want to change the, the metadata. Anyway, everything else is set up correctly and I'm simply going to hit OK. And this will then bring up uh, onto the screen my copy of iBooks to preview the ebook. Okay, so here is my ebook. I can just move through the ebook like this. Pictures can be enlarged. And also, I have the table of contents. Here we are, Mushroom Cod.
delicious. And so on. Okay, you'll get more explanation in the post uh, about this uh, project, which is, I should emphasize, work in progress.